Good morning. I'm just getting set up here. There may not be anyone on yet. Hmm. Hi, Meg. There we go. I think I'm good. There we go. Good morning. Hi, Meg. Good to see you. It's not quite 10. Hey, Tim. Just hang out a little bit. I think we're all set. I typically forget something. So I'm looking. Got the book over here. Got the other book. Bread, wine, chalice, music, glasses, mouse. I'm sorry, it's flickering again. We've been working on getting a shade for this window here. And uh, the church lady. Well, you know, she's a volunteer, so, you know, you have to be patient anyways. I think I just heard her. Morning, Sam. Blessed Pentecost to you, Sam. Oh, thanks, Meg. Meg knows that it's my anniversary today of being married to a person for many years in a row. And here comes the church lady now. Where's my music? Your music? Oh, uh, right there. Right there. Yes, church lady wanted uh, me to print uh, lyrics to the songs. Good morning, Tim. We'll get started in just a minute or two more. Let's see, which one? Hmm. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All of our priests have to know how to play guitar. I made that up. Not true. Karen. I'm sorry about the flickering. Um, maybe I'll turn that camera a little bit before we get started. That can be very annoying. Some of you might have a mental health disorder, yet it may, you know, cause, you know, agitation.
Kim, of course, uh, you can read in the comments, Tim Langlow, my colleague from New Beginnings Youth Shelter, when we worked together for three years. Four-year-old grandson in South Dakota fell down some stairs and broke his collarbone. Oh, poor fella. Okay, of course we'll pray for him today. Absolutely. Good grief. Oh, it's still flickering like crazy. I don't know what to do about it, so I apologize, folks. We'll have to live with it. And I guess we'll get started in a minute. I'm going to wait for the church lady to settle down. Can you hear me okay? Everything sound and look okay? I try to set it up so I can see your comments better. We're going to get a, a, a curtain for this. I have a window over here that lets in a lot of light. And someone gave me a generous tithe to uh, get a proper curtain for that. They didn't need to, but that was nice of them. And um, we just haven't done it yet. I'm sorry. So that's probably the source of this flickering. We'll get over it. And Anne's joint Meg's sister. Anne is joining us today. She's going like, is that that knuckleheaded kind of weird guy you used to know in high school? Was he a priest? Really? Wow, I got to see this. Okay, <laughs> sure. Well, welcome aboard. Anyways, well, it's a little bit after 10. Why don't we uh, get rocking and rolling, my brothers and sisters? There's a lot to pray about, isn't there? There is a lot to pray about on this Pentecost Sunday. So, um, I, I, I certainly know that my heart is very heavy, and I, I, I imagine yours is too. Oh, so, let's begin. Get ourselves centered here. <clears throat> I got all dressed up for Pentecost. See? Pretty nice, huh? The church lady was saying, well, I'm glad they can't see your shoes. <laughs> I'm glad you can't see them either. <laughs> all right, my brothers and sisters, enough. Opening him, of course, is Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost, create your blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Heavenly aim to fill the hearts which thou hast made, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. Oh, comforter, to thee we cry, thou heavenly gift of God most high. And fire of love and sweet anointing from above, and sweet anointing from above. Praise we the Lord, Father and Son and Holy Spirit.
One moment. What's the matter? He um, ordered the mass, that little booklet. One moment. Like I said before, some of you joined. It's like every mass is like I forget something kind of important. So, church lady's looking for something for me. Yeah, I got it right here, actually. Uh, yes. Actually, I have it right here, after all. Okay. All right. Apologies for the delay. Okay. As we begin, as we begin all things, my brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, at this time it's vitally important that we take a few moments to reflect upon our sins, to prepare for absolution in confidence of our, wonder, of our merciful Father's plan of salvation. Let's take a moment to reflect upon our sins. And we pray together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We laid our sins at the feet of our merciful Creator and Heavenly Father. Let us now receive our absolution. By the power handed down through the Apostles, receive your absolution, your absolved of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, let the Spirit you sent on your church to begin the teaching of the Gospel continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we move to the Liturgy of the Word. We change books. And our first reading on this Pentecost Sunday comes from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost came, it found the brethren gathered in one place. Suddenly, from up in the sky, there came a noise, like a strong driving wind, which was heard all through the house where they were seated. Tongues as of fire appeared, which parted and came to rest on each of them, and all were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to express themselves in foreign tongues and make bold proclamations as the Spirit prompted them. Staying in Jerusalem at that time were devout Jews of every nation under heavens. These heard the sound and assembled in a large crowd. They were much confused because each one heard these men speaking his own language. The whole occurrence 
astonished them, and they asked in utter amazement, Are not all of these men who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us hears them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. We live in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya around Cyrene. There are even visitors from Rome, all Jews, or those who have come over to do Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. Yet each of us hears them speaking in his own tongue about the marvels God has accomplished. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you ever take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works, pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul writes, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. There are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. There are different works, but the same God who accomplishes all of them in everyone. To each person, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The body is one and has many members, but all the members, many though they are, are one body. And so it is with Christ. It was in one spirit that all of us, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink of the one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, good morning. It's so great to see all of you. Let me scroll through comments and see if anybody has anything to say. Okay. Well, I need to begin by reading a letter. This comes from our College of Bishops. A 
on the letter is in very teeny tiny font. So this is from the Catholic Apostolic Church in North America. That's my bunch, okay? And this is a pastoral letter from the College of Bishops on the recent incidents in Minneapolis, Minnesota and Brunswick, Georgia, where two men were brutally murdered, one, uh, one due to excessive force by a police officer and the other, uh, the other gunned down by two white vigilantes. It's very short. We, the College of Bishops, condemn in the strongest possible terms the sin of racism. We must speak out against systemic racism that has infected institutions charged with protecting and serving. By not doing so, we contribute to people of color suffering from oppression, abuse, and even death. We may have failed to speak out in the past, but we promise we will strive to make recompense by boldly speaking out against racism in favor of justice for those who have been harmed because of racism and taking action to insist government leaders do their duty to pass laws and regulation to protect racial minorities. 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 says, Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Research shows that it's become more common for people to express racist and radically insensitive views toward minorities over the last three years. An overwhelming majority of people of color feel that whites benefit a fair amount from advantages that blacks do not have. People of color have only 10 cents in wealth for every one dollar held by white households. People of color are also twice as likely to be pulled over while driving and three times as likely to be killed by the police as whites. We, the College of Bishops, therefore call on all clergy and members of the Catholic Apostolic Church in North America and our ecumenical brothers and sisters to first pray for an end to systemic racism in the church, the private sector, and in governmental institutions. Additionally, we implore, and we implore our local state and government officials to invest in and employ resources to immediately bring an end to racism, racial bias, and racial profiling, and racial discrimination in work, housing, public accommodations, investment, and any other opportunity that leads to a better life. The College of Bishops directs that this pastoral letter will be sent to each parish, mission, and religious community. This pastoral letter shall be made public on social media and by email distribution list by help by parishes, missions, and religious communities. In the spirit of Christ's love and for all humanity, Bishop Anthony Santori, presiding bishop, on behalf of the College of Bishops and the Catholic Apostolic Church in North America, and I dare say on behalf of all humanity, my brothers and sisters, good morning. Uh, on this Pentecost Sunday, where we are mindful of the birth of our faith, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us at this time just simply find a way to be at peace. Now peace does not mean inaction. Peace does not mean passivity necessarily. But to be at peace with yourself, to be at peace with what you can do and the knowledge that you've done what you can, prayed as hard as you could, and engaged in any positive action you possibly could to ease suffering and to heal wounds. This is such an unspeakably sad time. Yes, William, of course, we're going to pray for the folks in LA, for store owners. This is such a sad time. And frankly, all I know what to do is pray and speak out. Racism is a sin. I didn't say anything profound there, did I? We all know this. Our God is a God of love. It says so right in Scripture. It says it over and over again. And the greatest commandments that come from our Lord Jesus Himself are commands to love. 
when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandments were, he said there are two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And the other commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And upon these two commandments rest all of the prophets and the law as well. And in the Gospel of John, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus said to his friends, One last commandment I give you. Love one another. In this way they will know you are mine. So, racism is the opposite of that. Now, it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing, racism. It's easy to point out racism at a Klan rally. Pretty easy to do. It's the guys in the tall white pointy hats. But this is a time for reflection. From what I can tell, everybody joining me today, with the exception of Bishop Mike, is uh, is a white person. Um, I've been white for 58 years in a row. I'm pretty good at it. And this is a time for us to reflect, to look into our hearts. I know every one of you, I know none of you is racist. But at the same time, do we not sometimes find discomfort in the presence of people who are not like us? At the same time, do we not lock our doors when we're out driving around and we see a group of black kids on the way to the park, maybe to play basketball or meet up with friends and perfectly innocent? Do we not feel sometimes a little uncomfortable? It's important to say these things out loud to ourselves and to one another. It's really important. I don't know what a whole lot else there is to say, except that it's time for, I, I'm very pleased and encouraged by the amount of outrage there is among everybody, including many, many of my white brothers and sisters who have linked arms at peaceful protests and held signs and demanded accountability from our institutions that continuously perpetrate senseless acts of racism. This is such a difficult time. I, I, I actually have some contact with the law enforcement community and this is a difficult time for them too because as we all know our law enforcement officers suit up every day to serve their communities with dignity and commitment and a sense of service and love for their people. And then we have this fellow in Minnesota. And then we have these cops in New York with Eric Garner, who also said, I can't breathe, before he suffocated. They're hurting too. We're all hurting. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit. It's so complicated. But it's important for those of us who are in the privileged demographic, and we are. Yeah, and there can be no mistake. If you disagree with me, you're free to, but I'll just simply tell you I love you, but you're wrong. We are in the most privileged demographic to ever walk the face of the earth, especially those of us who are male. Uh, does that mean I live in a mansion? Of course not. Does that mean I didn't have to work for everything I have? Of course not. But the starting line for me was a lot different than it was for my black brothers and sisters. The starting line for me was here. For my friends of color, it was back here. And for women of color, it was here. And I didn't cause this, and neither did you. But we must recognize it. As people of love, as people of the God of love, an acknowledgement that all of us are brothers and sisters. It's an important time of reflection. Receive the Holy Spirit. Pray to God. Pray to God. You're angry about the looting? Of course you are. Who wouldn't be? And these peaceful protests have been sabotaged, sadly, by those few who would resort to opportunism and violence. 
is so important to look past the chatter, look past the ephemera, look past the foolishness and look to the root of the issue. We start with ourselves. I love you all and you love me. Let's love one another. Let's love everyone. I really don't know what to say. I'm kind of going on and on. You, 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 you know what to do. Reflect. Receive the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we ask for your wisdom. We ask for your wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask for your grace. We ask for the, the, the wisdom of a second thought before we open our mouths. Lord Jesus, we ask for peace. The very first words you said when you entered that room with the apostles was peace. Let us receive this wisdom this day on this Pentecost Sunday. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, it's funny, I felt very preachy. But I'm a priest, so I figured, okay, well, all right. Um, one moment. Now I'm going to say together our profession of faith as soon as I find it. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, now we are so bold as to lay our petitions at the feet of our merciful Creator. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his people, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. Let us now unite in prayer as the disciples did on that first Pentecost and open ourselves to receive that very same Holy Spirit. We pray for George Floyd and all those who love and miss him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Samantha Schwartz Phillips, Lisa Segrist Fuhr, Katerina Richardson Bush, and all of our frontline health care workers, social workers, mental health workers, first responders, and all who have pledged to serve their community in this time of COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Dave Kranzberger, the husband of our friend Kathy Stritzinger Kranzberger, who attended Catholic Central High School with many of us, uh, class of 81, I think. As you know, we've been praying for Dave, who has been assessed for a possible lung transplant. It is now determined that his cancer has spread and chemotherapy has been discontinued. While we continue to pray for healing, we pray for peace and comfort for Kathy, Dave, and their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly, especially those with underlying medical conditions. We pray for the lonely. We pray for the anxious, depressed, and all who are emotionally overwhelmed. We pray for patience and wisdom as we wrestle with easing social restrictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are living paycheck to paycheck who will be asked to stay home during this time of difficulty. We pray for those who don't have the option of staying home. We pray for those who have to work. We pray for those who need to stay home with their children because schools have been closed. We pray for all who are living on the fringes of our economic system in this time of pandemic. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the 365,966 souls who have perished in this time of COVID-19. We pray for all their friends and family who love them and miss them. 101,567 of those fatalities in our nation. And we also pray for the over nearly 6 million who are infected worldwide. Let us continue to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the children who are still in cages at our southern border. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the continued health of our dear friends, Mary Ann and Ken Kelly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the continued health of our dear friend, Mary Beth Whalen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the health and comfort for the mother of Beth Ann Eccleston Greisinger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Patrick Ellingham, a member of St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish in St. Petersburg, Florida, who passed away this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of all countries to govern wisely during this terribly difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray selfishly and thanksgiving for yours truly and Doreen Reed, who are celebrating 34 years of marriage. This very day, mazel tovs to all. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let me tell you, thank God she did. Can you imagine what I'd be like if she hadn't taken me off the streets? Oh, you knew me, right? Okay, so send her a thank you card. And we pray for the family of God gathered here in this time of turmoil that we may bear witness to the love of Christ and reflect him in our lives, that we may show fearless and selfless love to one another as the world continues to heal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we, we rejoice in your spirit. Send him again into our hearts and into our lives and into our world. Hear our prayers and save us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I get so silly sometimes, but I love you with all my heart. I'm sorry I get silly. You, you, you saved me. I hope you've been as fortunate as I am. Where was I? Oh, sign of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you my peace, my peace I leave with you. But not upon our, on our not upon our sins, but on the faith of your people. And give us your peace. Well, we're not exactly all together in one room, but let us now share with one another the sign of Christ's love and peace. All together now. Peace be with you. Momentito, por favor. Now we turn our attention to the liturgy of the word. It's right here. Let me tell you, this is a book made by committee. I don't know. 2,000 years, this is the best we could do.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth was given in human hands of me, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of this water, by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at these hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's church. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Today you sent the Holy Spirit on those who, on those marked out to be your children by sharing the life of your only Son, and so you brought the Paschal Mystery to its completion. Today we celebrate the great beginning of your church, when the Holy Spirit made known to all people the one true God, and created from the many languages of men one voice to profess our faith. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, 
calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with his Holy Spirit, and become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you, and enable us to share the inheritance of your saints, with Mary the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen the faith and love of your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Anthony, our bishop, Michael, our bishop, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people, your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you, and mercy and love unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We pray for Patrick Ellingham, who passed away this week. We also pray for Trayvon Martin, Keith Scott, Adatiana Jefferson, Jonathan Farrell, Jordan Edwards, Stefan Clark, Amadou Diallo, Renisha McBride, Tamir Rice, Sean Bell, Walter Scott, Philando Castillo, Ayanna Jones, Terrence Crutcher, Alton Sterling, Freddie Gray, John Crawford, Michael Brown, Jordan Davis, Sandra Bland, Botham Jean, Oscar Grant, Corey Jones, Ahmad Aubrey, Eric Garner, George Floyd. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 It was our Lord himself who taught us to pray. And these are the very words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all undue anxiety, and so we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. May the mingling of this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, you death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you.
my brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And so, of course, communion means that we're all together as one body, one body of Christ. And, of course, we're not together in the same room. But as we've been saying for a few of these live streams now, it's a sucker's game to put limitations on uh, God. So, in confidence that our God has blessed the bread that you may have in front of you, the wine you may have in front of you, allow me to receive this communion on your behalf. Remain in communion with our Lord Jesus Christ all your days. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we have a communion hymn. I wonder where it is. Here we are. I'm sure you know this one. One bread, one body. And if you don't know it, I'll try to sing nice and pretty for you. One bread, one body, one Lord, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we the man.
Let us pray. Father, may the food we receive in the Eucharist help our eternal redemption. Keep within us the vigor of your spirit and protect the gifts you have given to your church. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. This day the Father of light has enlightened the minds of the disciples by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. May he bless you and give you the gifts of the Spirit forever. Amen. May that fire which hovered over the disciples as tongues of flame burn out all evil from your hearts and make them glow with pure light. Amen. God inspired speech in different tongues to proclaim one faith. May he strengthen your faith and fulfill your hope to see him face to face. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be filled with hope. Receive the Holy Spirit. This Mass is over and you, yes, you are now sent, and me too, we are sent to go and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. We have a closing hymn. What is it? Ah, here it is. I love this song. Holy God, we praise thy name. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Kathy Miller. You know what she does? She posts the lyrics to the songs, and she doesn't know what they're going to be. I just said it, and she's probably Googling it now, copying, pasting frantically. <laughs> I should really send her the songs ahead of time. Thanks, Kathy. Everybody needs a Kathy in their life. Keep the trains running on time. Hang on a minute. There we go. I'm stalling to give Kathy time to... <laughs> I think I'm hilarious. I listen to my own voice and I laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> well, the church lady rolls her eyes. Holy God, we praise thy name. God bless you all. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before. great to see you and be with you. I hope this is helpful. I hope it's refreshing to you, meaningful to you. God bless you all. And if you're not doing anything that Sunday, what the heck? I'm going to be here. 10 o'clock live streaming right here. Anyways, God bless you all. Have a wonderful week, a safe day, and pray for peace. Amen. <laughs>